And welcome to the 72 PC podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game. We have our fantastic usual lineup here of Tom. Hey! Eric. Hey! AKA Irk. And I am Adam. What's going on, fellas? You didn't A. Yeah. Hey! There hey. Go. Hey. hey! 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 How's it going, fellas? It's going all right. <laughs> Salem and Salem is awesome. Says, "Oh, I'm going to join this conversation. I'm going to join it real hard." Damn right you are. Well, Hell welcome yeah. to the conversation. <laughs> You've joined it quite hard. We also have a smiggle in the chat. What's going on? How's your week's been, fellas? Um, bad. Busy. Busy, busy as hell. Yeah. It's been yeah. unfortunate. Work busy or other things busy? Just work busy. Uh, Always work busy. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been a little more work busy than normal, which is, I mean, I've always got stuff to do, but I mean, it's a little more hectic than normal. Mm-hmm. It has. The, uh, yeah, it's yeah, sale this week has been sepia toned. Yeah, let me let me take a look. <laughs> yeah, a little bit sepia over here, too. I don't know. Um, it looks pretty, uh, pretty bright and shiny out there from, from what we can see. <laughs> Yeah, it's. it's uh, uh, have, have you guys ever seen Blade Runner twenty forty nine? No, but I've been or wanting to watch images. that. I've heard that's really good. It's fucking excellent, um, and and I was, I was a massive fan of the original Blade Runner. I was like, nah, they can't do a sequel. There's no way it'll never live up. By God, does it live up? <laughs> it was really <laughs> fucking good. It's always nice when sequels actually don't decimate the original. So yeah. I have to watch oh, the was, original first. Great. Is what you're saying? Uh, you don't have to. You should, because like, there's some context there that you wouldn't have otherwise. Uh-huh. But it's not required. I don't know what I uh, prefer. If I prefer sequels that require you to have seen the previous, or ones that are good enough to be standalone. So 2049 is definitely good enough to be a standalone, but it's more enjoyable if you've seen the sequels. If that makes sense. Yeah. I can understand um, that. But yeah, the, the reason I brought it up is because there's uh, like a, a long series of scenes where everything is just tinted bright fucking orange. Just neon orange everywhere. And uh, yeah, it, it looks almost like that outside. Not wow. quite as intense, but uh, uh, I'm sure it'll get there. Yeah, Last few days, we've been getting smoking. And then I woke up this morning like, oh, fuck, we got the color that California has been getting. Oh, no. <laughs> yep. <laughs> At least it's not as bad as Oregon. Oregon is like the blood moon rises from Breath of the Wild. They Dude, are that not pic- fucking around. That picture that someone took with the UPS truck, and it's just oh, like yeah. blood red sky behind it. That shit's insane. That's got to be like, surreal. Oh, yeah. That's got to be absolutely surreal. And for context, so, for anyone who has no clue, uh, there's just a fuck ton of wildfires on the West Coast. And um, when there's a lot of fires, it makes things smoky. And then when the light hits it, it gets red and orange. And it's cool, but creepy. Yeah. And, you know, just awful. I have had a nonstop headache for three days. Uh, so I'm, I'm hitting that with as much Tylenol and Advil as my body can take. Um, my throat's all fucking weird and scratchy. My wife is having the same issues. Like, it, I'm just straight up not having a good time right now, bro. That's wow. Like, do you guys have like, I know you guys have like a portable AC kind of thing. Is it pulling air yeah. from the outside? No, it's not. No, we, we specifically made sure that it was recycled or recycling, uh, recirculating <laughs> air, um, recirculating all the yeah, air. It was, it was recycling. Um, so we, we made sure it was re- uh, recycling the air from inside um, and we stuffed all the cracks around the AC with a bunch of towels and shit. Uh, it, it looks jank as hell, but it actually did make a pretty big difference. Um, I've stopped short of duct taping all of the surfaces in my apartment shut, though. Um, maybe uh, tomorrow. I was, just, I was curious because like, we haven't had any issues until today whenever I opened up a window because I was cooking shit that I didn't want to set off a smoke alarm. It's been bad. This apartment is fairly leaky. And it's just uh, like usually, usually that's fine, right? Like, sure, yeah. you lose some cooling in the summer and in the winter, things can get a little chilly, but I like it a little chilly. But when that smoke smell hit, it just it's fucking everywhere. And the worst part is my little office, my little work from home nook and cranny uh, is the worst room in the place. 
by far. Oh, it's really... just filled with smoke. Uh, that blows. Yeah. I'm, I'm not super, super thrilled with the current situation, but hey, it's a boy, I think. <laughs> what is, what is <laughs> yellow sky? So is yellow missed... sky mean boy or girl? So I've seen the memes on this, but I, I didn't actually see the, the news articles. What What is that all about? <laughs> What's the gender reveal thing? So apparently uh, a few of the fires, not all of them, most of the wildfires that are happening right now are caused by lightning strikes and unseasonably dry weather, right? It's completely natural phenomena. But a few of them, and one of the worst ones in Oregon, uh, were caused by a, uh, some people having a gender reveal party that required pyrotechnics for some fucking reason. <laughs> um, and they, lit, fucking they lit the fucking state on fire. Oh, no. So out here, you'll notice something that, like, you typically don't see in the eastern parts where they'll act, I guess, maybe in the mountainous areas. But, like, in Ohio, I never noticed it before. They'll have signs before you go into forest saying what the fire warning is. Yeah. So, like, we've been under red, like, don't have open flame kind of guidance for a while. Like, you might not want to grill those steaks. Like, maybe throw them in the oven today kind of warnings. And these people went out to the woods and did that. So, yeah. Oh, my God. Classic. And so Comrade Bunny is pointing out that, yeah, others were started by uh, campers due to Labor Day weekend party shenanigans. So, um, you know, just to know, if you're an outdoorsy person, and Irk, I know you are, pay attention to those fucking signs. You don't want to be that guy that burns down the whole goddamn state park. <laughs> yeah, no one's going to like that guy. Also, Salem calling out smoke is for putting flavor in your meat, not your lungs. Can yeah, you, agreed. That's what I'm talking now, about. I'm feeling pretty flavored right now, to be honest. Me, myself, hmm. personally. I've been marinating in this for three days. I'm going to be delicious by the end. <laughs> Got a nice cedar flavor in there from all the trees yeah, right. burning. Cedar, garbage, tires, plastic, you name it, I've got it. <laughs> That's what the fuck trash. kind of wildfires are up there where you guys are? <laughs> I mean, human-powered wildfires, which are the worst. Ah, shit. And you guys have... Oh, nice. I wasn't anticipating that happening. You guys, anyone else have anything fun been going on? I mean, uh, it, for actually, me, it's been fucking boring. I've actually been working on some music lately, which feels really good because I've been really not creative for a very long time. So it's been really nice to jump back into actually making things, and it feels good. You actually just uh, finished your second song recently. Yeah, that yeah, I've, I've done like two really like. chill songs this week. You probably, if you were here during the precast, you heard it on the the like the pre roll music or whatever. Put one of them on for that. But um, yeah, but it's, yeah, it's been cool. Yeah, it sounds really cool. Um, I'll go ahead and throw it out there. You started putting your shit up on um, Spotify. <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't realize how affordable that was. Um, but it's literally like for $20 a year, you can put unlimited songs on like Spotify, iTunes, Amazon Music, YouTube, all of the shit. things. I had no idea. Because I, the last time I looked into a service like that a long time ago, it was like, per song per year like 10 bucks yeah. per song per year or something and fuck so that. it is not ever and i'm and i'm not like you know advertising that service we're not sponsored or anything like that but like it has never been cheaper for for musicians to put their stuff on on the interwebs on stores and uh places people actually go to listen to music rather than like soundcloud or something which i know some people you know listen to music on soundcloud but it's it's different it's not a discovery avenue. Mm -hmm. It's more of someone well, links you to an avenue. Kind of. SoundCloud's yeah. got Just a like whole lot of discovery listening. features, but mm -hmm. it's it's not as big, right? It's it's the far side of indie. Where if Spotify is Steam, uh, SoundCloud is itch. Is yeah. it even that big? Yeah, I could see that. It might be. Yeah, because SoundCloud actually is pretty sizable as far as uh, user base. Mm -hmm. it is but i'm just saying like the way people typically use it is more in the lines of a um like a dropbox for music kind of yeah, thing for sure but sort it, it has more artist flavor because you actually have pages and shit but mm -hmm. yeah but uh yeah it's been cool and i like it's it's kind of forced me to 
actually finish a song because like nice. once it's on once it's on the stores and stuff like yeah you could re-release it or take it down and re-upload it or whatever but like that's kind of a a finalized point and Ooh. i've been making music for i don't know 15 years now and almost none of it have ever been really considered done or released and it's been a, a huge learning experience and just like it's never done but at some point you have to call it done yeah. and i think that's yeah. true I, in I, not I, just music but any kind of creative or artistic work like it, you're never gonna feel like it's done it's never gonna be as good as you want it to be but at some point you have to just be like all right this is it I'm going to leave it here. I'm accepting this as it is. And then maybe the next thing I make, I can make it a little better. Speaking, uh, yeah. speaking about my personal projects only, I'm going to put that out there. <laughs> um, yeah, like even when it comes to stuff like writing code or building applications or stuff like that, you're right. It's never done. It's just, you know, it gets to that good enough point where you feel comfortable releasing it. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, are, are there projects that I've published that, I would love to do more with or, you know, little things to optimize. Yes. All the time, every single day. Um, right. But you can't do that forever. Right. I'm a big advocate of don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. You've said that before. I've, I've heard you or I've read you say that before in our group chats and stuff, talking about uh, stuff we're doing with the podcast and the, the community and everything. And that's very, very true. It's so easy to get trapped into that. It's not perfect. So then nothing gets done. Yeah. yeah but that pass so, that pass was, perfect. <laughs> that was pretty good <laughs> i'm not gonna lie it was a good shot too this is a good positioning way to be there comrade bunny calling blasphemy saying no it has to be perfect um i'm sorry for our marriage uh, <laughs> i was gonna say I'm like she's with you she's already accepted <laughs> she, she accepted that a long time she's ago like, don't let the don't let perfect be the enemy of the barely passable <laughs> don't let tom be the enemy of pleasure <laughs> of enjoyable oh no, jesus but, um, oh unrelated news um so <laughs> a little bit ago i went up to the kitchen i'm like you know i want something to drink i drink a fuck ton of water i'm like you know what i want something else other than water we actually have a two liter of sprite in the fridge i'm gonna grab a little sprite i pour me a nice glass i sit it down i get sidetracked doing some shit with the dogs helping out with some stuff i get back i see my glass i just pick it up start drinking it I forgot I got Sprite instead of water. Oh. Fuck, that's a punch to the face. <laughs> I was Did worried that that story was going in a different direction and that that cup was something that wasn't your beverage earlier. <laughs> oh. Like one of those situations or something that's been sitting there for like a day or two or something. Yeah. Oh. I did that as a very little kid. Um, so you can use vinegar to clean stuff. So my mom had taken a little plastic cup, the same cups oh. that I drink out of, oh. and put a little white vinegar in it and hadn't oh. cleaned yet, but just had white vinegar sitting there. Ugh. Me as a stupid three-year-old picks it up. And ever since I was young, I chugged oh. when I drink. Oh, no. <laughs> I just you just chugged went all this in white on vinegar. That. Oh. oh, That's awful. That sounds so bad. Oh, it was terrible, dude. <laughs> Fucking terrible. I was three years old and still remember that shit. <laughs> You guys ever really had any experiences of that? Like you drink uh, something yeah. expecting it to be uh, A, but it turns out to be B. No, I've yep. almost, I almost drank a Mountain Dew can full of cigarette ashes, but oh, <laughs> but stopped myself before I took a drink. But I did pick it up with the intention of taking a drink. God, that would have been awful. <laughs> it's like this smells I've a little different. Do, <laughs> I've seen that done down in Arkansas. I had a cousin who dipped. Oh, and no. uh, there was someone over oh, who thought it was is... Dr. Pepper can. Oh. No, that makes me want to gag just thinking about it. That's awful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The worst. Oh God, Scott's saying in the uh, his favorite was people in the military putting cigarette butts in soda cans and then also drinking the can of soda. Uh. Like, <laughs> please tell me they weren't doing that on purpose. Please tell me that wasn't on purpose. Yeah, well, I don't know. It was the military. So just people That's what I'm some saying. Things sometimes. <laughs> oh, and also, uh, Renee's calling out. Um, I think a lot of us have probably done this. As a kid, you find that baking cocoa up in the cabinet. Yeah. You grab a spoonful of it. Yeah, thinking, oh, this is on the front, not, like, not as sweet as you thought, huh? <laughs> yeah. That shit's bitter. 
Uh, good times, good times. Well, that said, you guys been doing any games? Video no. games. I've 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 been Actually, doing yeah. a lot of a new one. Uh, I think oh. Tom finally got in on this last night. Some. Oh yeah, I did. You uh, jumping right into I, it. Yeah, right Let's into it. it because Let's jump into it. I, I want to inform everyone out here right now because we will again later. This is going to be a postcast game tonight. Two nights. But um, it's happening among- after the show. Damn my eye. Sorry for scratching it really vigorously. Anyway, Among Us. Um, released in 2018, I believe. Oh, I didn't um, know it's yeah. been around that long. Yeah, mm-hmm. like I don't know if some big streamer picked it up or if they recently came out of early access or something like that. But this game caught fire recently. It's been out a while, and a lot of us around the Discord have been playing it. Like the other night, we had two full fucking lobbies of the game going. <laughs> so we had like 17 or 20 was somewhere around there it was a good count of people playing but that game is so much fun it's so much fun so it's can you so can you fun. break can you break it down and explain yes explain the whole thing okay so i'm just going to explain it as if it's only the one level and then understand that there's some variations that happen based on different levels so um there's 10 people or however many but for our the sample we say 10 people as crew members we're all on a team, or we all think we're on a team. We all have so many tasks that we each have to accomplish. If every one of us accomplish our tasks, we win. So sounds easy, right? But out of the 10 people, two people are what's called an imposter. And their objective is to kill and eliminate everyone. So while everyone's going around doing tasks, these imposters are acting like they're doing tasks. So they kind of blend in. And then whenever you're in a room alone with them, they'll get the option to kill you if they want. And then oh. let's say I kill Adam and then I go on and act like I'm doing more tasks. Tom runs into the room and he sees a oh, dead body. Shit, there's a dead body. All of a sudden, I could, I could use body. my megaphone and be like, guys, there's a dead body. And it calls a meeting. Oh, and no. then in this meeting, you're going to have to deliberate between everyone. Say, like, this is where I found the body, and everyone's starting to talk. I was doing this. I was with this person. I was with that person. Where was this guy at? I haven't seen. I him was all over the time. in the engine room. No, or, really, I was over in the engine room. Or Billy was following me. Really weird. He was really suspicious here. Or how did you get to that hallway so fast? So there's a lot of that. And at the end of the meeting, you vote on who you're going to eliminate, or you can decide to skip a vote so you don't eliminate anyone so you can vote people out that you think's bad it's kind of like a um a kind of like werewolf when it comes to that yeah werewolf mafia Mafia. yeah so so it has a little vibe of that so high level that's the gameplay um the (laughs) people whom are the saboteurs or the imposters have a few extra options as well they can use vents to duck around the level really quick so they can be in multiple spots really fast which they get caught doing is a red flag, mm-hmm. but it gives them the ability to kill someone and get the fuck out of there without anyone ever seeing them. Okay. And they also have the ability to do what's called sabotages. So like one type of sabotage is like, Hey, I'm going to make the react or the engine overheat and two people have to go over and cool it down. Otherwise the game's automatically over. So everyone has to stop what they're doing to prevent the sabotage or a less aggressive one you can turn off the lights so everyone can only see what's immediately around them until someone fixes the lights. And that gives them. Yeah. So that gives the sabotage people a lot better vision and knowing that other people can't see them as well. So if you want to jump in this game tonight, it's either five bucks on steam or I believe the mobile version is totally free, right? Yes. So if you want to play it on your phone and it's fully cross play enabled, you can absolutely do that. And something that's um, I didn't call out about, it's not gameplay, but it's gameplay, is um, while the round's going on, while you're not in a meeting, everyone is muted. There's absolutely no in-game communication allowed. Okay. You don't talk. And then in the meetings, everyone gets in voice and everyone starts to talk. That way you don't get someone saying shit or something like that when they die yeah. Yeah. and stuff like that. So is that just by the honor system? Because there's nothing stopping everybody from just joining into a Discord call. And then what is fun to make it to where you don't need to? Once you die, there is a chat there that all the dead people can use to talk to each other. So you can be like, well, who killed you? 
So you could try to figure out who the imposter is that way. But you guys don't get a vote once you're dead. Once you're dead, you're gone. So that's okay. why it's okay for you okay. to talk and figure out who the imposter is and stuff. Oh. So yeah, so, it's it's really rad. I like th this plays into the there was a game called Deceit we played a little while ago that was is has this yes. aspect, but where you're actively encouraged to lie and be a terrible person. It, it seems yes. like the perfect game to <laughs> to ruin friendships, not in a serious oh. way, but like in the same way that mon like the game of Monopoly ruins friendships by you know financially dominating somebody into submission. This one ruins yes. friendships by encouraging <laughs> lying and deceit. Cold face lies. So, yes. uh, Salem calling out Tom as the imposter. Now, my first game last night, I actually did get selected as one of the two <laughs> imposters in our full party. Um, and I was wondering around because I, like, I was simultaneously had no idea what I was doing, but understood like werewolf mafia, those types of games. So I'm like, oh shit, I gotta, I gotta lean in hard to my noobishness. Cause like I would walk up and try to do tasks like other normal people because they have stuff to get done so they can win the game. Um, and as the imposter, you can't actually do them. Like, you can, you can, like, walk up to that area, but it doesn't actually, like, make that progress bar go up. So I was like, uh, guys, how do, I, how do I do this? How do I fix this wiring? Oh, I see. It's a task list up here. Here, can you show me where this thing is? And then they would show me, and I'd backstab them. Uh, and so I leaned in heavily to my, my my noobishness, and I ended up getting a win last night for uh, for the imposters. I killed yeah. everyone. Great. So I absolutely <laughs> will kill a new person because it's so easy to be an imposter if you're new because you can play off ignorance. Yeah, and it worked so well. But um, damn it, I was super else. happy with that. But yeah, just the, like you said, Deceit came to my mind. Uh, Dobby brought this game to my attention about a month or two ago. And the first thing that came to my mind when he's explaining it is like, this is Deceit. But A, the game looks, uh, I, I don't mean this in a hateful way. Compared to Deceit, the game looks like garbage. It is just a 2D, like low budget animated game. It's not yep. anything that's going to look pretty. You're going to look at it and just think this game looks like nothing. Why is it a big deal? It's the social aspect of that game. Yeah. That's, just yeah. awesome. That's the whole thing. Um, and also on that, uh, they confirmed earlier this month that they are working on the last or uh, among us too. And that they are going to be giving discounts to anyone who just recently bought among us one on steam, which is rad. Oh, nice. That's, that's really great. convenient because a lot of people just bought it recently because of it's, yeah. you know, popularity and exploding. They, and the servers aren't holding up too great for it. They're definitely having server issues. And they've called out, like, this game wasn't made to get this big. Like, their their dev diary explaining, like, their announcement of two was really well written and explains, like, yeah, we didn't expect this to catch fire, so we're sorry. The servers kind of suck. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's 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 a fun game. Um, I'm really anticipating getting into it tonight. Uh, if you do play it at some point and you only have, like, five people, it's still enjoyable, but it's different. It's not as intense. So stick it, stick with it until you at least play with about eight, nine people. And, and that's when you really get the feel. So if if you're playing this and if you've gotten used to the standard, you know, how does this game work sort of stuff, and you want to add just a little bit of extra spice to your gameplay, turn off um the confirmed ejects. Basically, that's you, the only way to play. Only way to play. So if if you eject somebody from the airlock, um, by default, confirmed ejects is on, which means it'll say, you know, hey, this person that you you just murdered was an innocent person. Okay, okay, hold on. I want to clarify something real quick. When he's saying ejects, you eject the person that you vote off that you think is the imposter. Yeah. So that's okay. what that is. The voting process votes who you're rejecting. Yeah. It's, it's okay. quite literally you vote who you're going to shove out of an airlock. Uh, which is great. <laughs> Fantastic picture. Okay, um, continue, continue. But like, if you have the default set with confirmed DJX turned on, it's going to say, oh, look, you killed an imposter. So you're like, okay, well, we only have to worry about one guy right now. And it's not great. If you turn it off and it's a mystery, then like, I don't know, was, was Bob innocent or was he an imposter? 
We don't fucking know. We think Bob was an imposter, but we're not sure. And so it adds like this extra layer of tension on top of the gameplay. So I'll give you an in-game example where that made a huge difference. It, con uh, confirm rejects was on. So I'm coming out of a hallway as Scott is coming in the hallway. And then I see a dead body right behind him and someone else right on the body reports it. So my brain goes to Scott just killed a person and is leaving. And this person came into the scene, saw it and reported it. Ooh. So I go to bat immediately. I'm like, I just saw him come into this hallway, dead body right behind him. There is no way he didn't see the body. He would have reported it if it wasn't him. Come to find out what happened. This, we all vote him out. He wasn't the imposter and it told us. So we instantly knew what actually happened. The guy who mm. reported it instantly killed the guy and instantly reported it knowing I was going to think it was Scott. Oh, so had con or confirmed rejects not been on, we would have thought we got rid of an imposter because I was 100% certain Scott killed him. <laughs> it builds up like, because the, the feedback loop for making those decisions is really short with confirm on. Like you make your decision, you get the feedback immediately. Mm -hmm. If it's turned off, it delays that with added tension. So you're just like, yeah. well, did we? I don't know. Well, Did two more ever? people died. I mean, that means there has to be two imposters left, right? No, not so necessarily. Getting... They can kill like once every 30 seconds. But but wait, so I think that's all. This. this guy was suspicious, but this guy also is kind of suspicious. They can't be all suspicious. Uh, and it's, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. So jump into the Discord tonight. Uh, join us in uh, in the Among Us lobby. and uh, Or lobbies, really. Uh, yeah. And uh, we'll get some games going. Yeah, it'll be a good time. Uh, speaking of good time, you guys still been uh, enjoying you some Tony Hawk? A little. I haven't played it a lot. <laughs> I hit my initial heavy hit on it, and now I think it's going to be more of a, um, eh, a couple times a month I'll probably jump into it. Yeah, I could see uh, that. I'm playing a lot. <laughs> Basically, every time I get on my PC, I'm playing Tony Hawk. That's awesome. Are you doing multiplayer primarily, or have you been just running through the story? Mostly not the story, but the, the campaign or whatever. Yeah. Um, because I want to 100% this game. I want to get everything. Um, like, maybe not unlock all, like, the multiplayer challenges, but at least the single-player runs, I want to mm -hmm. get 100%, because that's what I did as a kid, is I would run through those games and 100% everything, mm -hmm. and I want to do it again. So. Yeah, and that, that's actually what I spent my time this week playing was the single player stuff. And oh hell, you was in the one where I couldn't fucking jump the gap in the buildings downtown. <laughs> yep. And then that I was, was doing this for over an hour and I kept failing. I'm like, Tom, see if you can do this. First try, he oh, gets of course it. He, I'm does, like, doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't do it the rest of the night. <laughs> <laughs> I figured it out though. So um, and this this is something that's a little subtle unless you you know you're skateboarding or Tony Hawk. Uh, depending on how you're facing on the board, like either with your right foot forward or left foot forward, your skater has a preferred way of facing, either regular with your left foot forward or goofy with your right foot forward. Your tricks, your efficiency, your speed, everything else is worse when you're switched off of your default style, when you are switch. So, uh, yeah, if you can't make it, try, uh, try slamming that R2 button and uh, reverting your way to victory. Oh, well, in that case, um, yeah, I'm going to have to do that. Yeah. But yeah, um, really digging it. Still still enjoying it some, but yeah, it's definitely for me going on the decline. So what about you, Tom? You've got some stuff. I do have some stuff. So I played some Tony Hawk. Tom? I played some Halo multiplayer last night. Um, oh, cool. I know. Which one? Right? Thanks for hitting me up, dick. <laughs> I, it was like two in the morning. Uh, oh, so okay. Thanks for not hitting me up, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I wanted to play some Halo. Like, I was feeling some multiplayer shooter. I didn't really want to, you know, play Counter-Strike. Um, did some did some capture the flag. Did uh, a little bit of the, you know, big hitting heavies Halo 1 mode where you're running around with uh, a bunch of tanks and shit, and that's fun. Um, did big Slayer, so 8v8. Uh, yeah, big, that, big team is... The best modes. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Well, there's there's one, like, my main reason for wanting to play Big Team 
is that I don't want to feel so responsible when we lose. Like if it's just like me and three other people and I am absolutely always the dead weight, that feels like shit. Like, hey, Tom, you got two kills and 30 deaths. Thanks, buddy. Uh, but if it's eight people, like, hey, Tom, you got two kills, but there's always going to be somebody with zero. So good job. Good job. I, <laughs> <laughs> I always liked it because Halo did uh, vehicle play better than any other shooter. The vehicle play in Halos is excellent. And with big team, there's more emphasis on it. You got heavier weapons. You have bigger equipment. And you can still like get inside of things and have your close quarters assault rifle shotgun combat. Mm -hmm. But there's always going to be the push-pull over tank, banshee, lasers, rockets. Yeah. And that's really enjoyable to me. And especially when you get to reach. Because then you start getting things like the Hornet in the Spectres and stuff like that. The other vehicles that were just as good as the originals. So, uh, I mean, I love that shit. I found, I found out where I was affected. I'm really good at driving the Warthog. And I'm really good at shooting from the Warthog. And... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm basically from trash every, from the, the warthog. The warthog. The warthog. The warthog. The warthog. For the but record. I'm, I'm garbage at literally everything else. For the record, I think the Battlefield series did a pretty good job with vehicles, too. Yeah, they did v fine. Vehicles in I... combination with uh, standard, you know, boots on the ground kind of gameplay. Yeah. I, I Most games, when there's vehicles, it's either super small or... Or they're just overpowered as fuck. Mm -hmm. Scott calls out Titanfall. I don't know if I consider the Titans vehicles. I mean, they are, but like yeah, they don't play as much like vehicles. Yeah, they play like beefed up shooters, mm -hmm. like a beefed up character is what they play like. I'll tell you what I I really dislike, and I, I usually hate the vehicle level in the campaign mode of a game that isn't a vehicle game. <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. It's just this never seems... It's never like the... It's never the... I don't know. It's like... It's not the gameplay I wanted. Like, I, I bought this game. And I'm playing through this game. And then all of a sudden... It's like the water levels, right? Like, you get okay. to this section and it's like, Oh, this doesn't play anything like... Like the rest of the game. And sometimes it feels like those are kind of shoehorned in. Ooh. Yeah. Um, but I know you don't like them. Whatever with that. You got to give love to Halo's last levels. The Warthog levels to end out Halo campaigns are fucking great. They are absolutely. I will say, yeah, that that last level of campaigns. Reach, or not the. Oh, I guess it's right man. before the last, technically the last stage or whatever. But that oh, was that fantastic. Warthog the Warthog thing at the end of Reach was a fantastic sequence. Same with Halo Three. Halo Three had like the entire rings falling apart as you leave. Well, I guess Halo One did too. Yeah. Halo 1 and 3 both did it. Reach was great. Like, the entire ending from that Warthog scene on yeah, was just fucking absurd. Reach was wonderful. But yeah, so I mean, that, that's, that's my big thing with Big Team with Halo. It's, they did vehicles well, and it feels good. Then Navi asks, do you guys have a favorite Halo campaign? I know Eric One. definitely has an answer. Um, One. ODST. E Easy ODST. Easy. ODST really? is hands down the best. It is that the most is unique really and it fun. has it uses the best gameplay engine. Halo 3 to me was the best Halo per play. Uh -huh. And then it, ODST was the most unique and still Halo-ish campaign. But you weren't a god. You were just a fucking orbital drop soldier. Mm -hmm. Ooh. So you had to play a little more cautious. Which um, was really enjoyable. My answer to the question is probably two with the exception of the arbiter levels <laughs> okay, um yeah. and that's only it's mainly just nostalgia because it's only that's really the only game i super like really really got into i never played the first game's campaign all the way through i don't think i played halo 3's campaign all the way through um i never even touched odst um and i played reach so that's like really the only thing i have to go by um but i would say probably halo 2 with the exception of the last two sequences of reach were fantastic until Bungie got rid of it. Two was probably what I would think the weakest, but outside of that, they were all good. Like mm -hmm. campaign wise. I know Tom had beef with three with the glue or the bloom and the graphical I had stuff. Beef with 
basically everything except one. Because <laughs> I bought Halo 2 on the promise that it was Halo 1, but bigger and better in every way. And instead of, like, a Halo 1 had these big, giant open levels. Um, like, there was one in particular that had three objectives around a very large map. And you took around your Warthog and your, your group of Marines, and you went around and completed stuff in any order you wanted to. But it was a big, giant, almost uh, what looks like Halo Infinite-style giant-ass world map. And I love that freedom. I, I love the, the idea of, hey, you're on an alien planet. Go explore this shit. And by the way, there's some objectives you should tackle. Uh, and Halo 2 was very much, okay, you're here. you got to go over, over here through basically a winding tunnel of gameplay. Uh, repeat that you know, for eight levels. And that was the game. It had nothing in common with Halo 1 as far as level design goes. And it really fucking disappointed me. Uh, I bought an Xbox for Halo 2. And Jesus Christ, that, that taught me a real good lesson. And I, I agree with you that 2 got more corridory. 3 brought back in some of the bigger worlds. Um, there's a very distinct one I remember where you're flying around a lot with the Hornets. And there is, the, the whole area is huge. And there's different areas you can stop you don't need to that actually have like skulls hidden in them with like enemies. And they're not part of the story. So they got back a little bit to it on that. Okay. But I, I call out the, for what Scott's getting at, I call out the Bungie specific ones because their stories and everything were the best. 343 took over with Halo 4. And Halo 4 is hands down the worst Halo put out to date. <laughs> hands down. It I was, they tried to be COD. The campaign was okay oh. at best, and they tried to be COD with the multiplayer. No, it was can't. awful. Ugh. They redeemed it with five. Five was better for the campaign. It's multiplayer. They brought back in some more classical stuff. But yeah, five is probably the best 343 one. How, you, I, how I are you? Uh... Why, I don't get why some series need to copy the popular thing. Like Halo was big enough being yeah. halo it's not exactly it, an indie it, title it, right yeah like it already had people that loved it for what it was why are you copying something that feels entirely different it doesn't mean you're going to get the halo people and the cod people to love it in the best case the cod people will say oh cool it's a sci-fi themed cod they'll play it for a month and drop it and you've burned the goodwill of your existing community so, and that's what I liked about five. Five brought in some of the kind of cottage stuff. They had a game mode called Warzone, which was a monster mode. It was like 1616. And there was like NPCs you had to kill on the map as well as the other players. And you had to score points by different objectives while there's two different teams going on. But the cool thing about this mode was you would have upgrades that you can get in the game for your gun through a card system that, yes, you could pay money for, but it wasn't required. It was, they give you enough stuff to not have to buy it. But so there you could have different guns from people with different strength levels, but it was just in that playlist, just in that matchmaking queue. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, it was traditional Halo for the most part, which was way better. So they started to get the balance there where they actually took something similar to COD and then put a unique spin on it instead of just saying we want to make it like cod but so yeah. what the fuck happened with the halo story because halo one and the books the story was outstanding two got weird and then everything just fell apart um so in three i mean i think everyone remembers three like you fired the rings like it was you did the shit you fired all or the arc i should say which was the thing controlling the rings in four you end up finding forerunners and you realize the forerunners didn't build the rings to stop the flood. They built the rings to stop the humans. Ah, yeah. I mean, that makes sense. And they were studying the flood and the flood was a disease. They were trying to stop that as well, but they de-evolved humans because they found humans to be a threat. Well, I mean, have you seen us? <laughs> and that's where, from there, you start getting new enemy types with the robotic-looking forerunners. But that campaign was weird. Five, you end up playing not as Master Chief some. And in this universe, AI degenerates over time, and it starts losing itself. Well, Cortana starts going a little crazy. 
and you're trying to find her. And at the very end, she's doing some shady ass shit that I don't know how they're going to retcon for six. Mm -hmm. Because the fact that you just wake up and it's like so many years later is very convenient. And I hope to God they fill in the gap because Cortana was about to fuck shit up. I mean, fuck a lot of shit up. So it, it's interesting. The story's not bad. It's still one of my favorite shooter campaigns per story. But we'll see. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. Anywho, that was a lot of Halo talk. So <laughs> that um, happens from time to time. Yeah. Especially weird since I'm the only real big Halo guy. But anyway. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like I can't weigh in that much on these because I, I really just played very casually and mostly multiplayer. I played every one of them fairly heavy at some point. Yeah. You're definitely the Halo guy when I'm like, oh, I, I need to know something about Halo. I ask Eric. Yeah, I love me some Halo. It used to be really good. Not anymore. <laughs> I should I should probably reread The Fall of Reach to see if that book was actually good or if I just liked it because I was 14 and it was Halo related. The story's pretty interesting. And I mean, I've seen the narrative in a few different ways. Like Halo Wars, what they did with Halo Wars was brilliant. Like, hey, it's an RTS that actually plays pretty damn good on console. But they yeah. used it as a storytelling narrative, which is something I'm not used to in RTSs so much. Like they expand like 100 years explaining the Marines in the fight against the Covenant oh. and explaining different key points, which is really cool. So they actually get a hit on some of the novel lore that wasn't really explored in the games. But yeah, let's get off Halo, shall we? No, He's got something move else. on. It's just Halo. Always just has. Halo? Always had. Uh, it's just Ohio. It always has been. Anyway, has. Tom, you have some other <laughs> games. I do have some more games. Uh, I played a little bit more Pathfinder. It's still fun. Uh, I'm going through on super easy difficulty so I can see story stuff. Um, and I encountered something interesting last night. There are these two, like, warring factions of tiny monster creatures, and they're like, well, they stole our treasure. And then the other guys are like, no, we were protecting the treasure. You stole it from us afterwards. And they're like, great hero of the land, big person. Who is correct? And you can pick a side. Like, these people are about to go to war with each other, and you can pick a side. My character is chaotic neutral. And my guy said, as long as you leave me alone, I don't really give a fuck. I'm just going to walk this way. And they're like, all right, fine. Like, I passed my skill check. So what happens is they go and they murder each other in this pretty big dungeon. And as, as you're moving through the dungeon, you encounter, like, a bunch of different battles where they're just lining up and slaughtering each other. Uh, and then when everybody's dead and they're gone, I just walk through all the bodies and pick up all their loot. Just literally grave robbing. It was <laughs> fucking great. I don't think you could toy the line of being chaotic or chaotic evil any closer than what you did there. <laughs> right? It was fantastic. I just like, I was just like, yeah, look, I, I don't need to be involved. I'm not part of your tribe. Just just do your shit and leave us alone. And like, I guess. Uh, so yeah, the, the grave robbing worked really well. I got a bunch <laughs> of masterwork equipment. So is Chaotic Neutral your normal go-to whenever you do anything with alignments? Yeah, Chaotic Neutral is my usual because it's Chaotic Neutral is basically the I'm going to do what's good for me and fuck all y'all. <laughs> yeah. Fuck all y'all is the whole thing. <laughs> I personally tend to like lean that. on the uh, Chaotic Good side. Fuck the law. I'm doing what I think I should. Yeah. But yeah. So some more Pathfinder. Good, good, good. Yeah. I see you did a little bit um, more uh, Divinity Original Sin. So I have never gotten super far into this. Um, because every time I play the game, I'm like, wow, this got really hard. You know what? I should create a build like this. And then I'll go and restart the campaign. Um, or I'm like, oh, this is a cool story. Because I picked one of the characters that's got like a written backstory. I'm like, but what about that guy? And so then I restart the game and pick somebody else so what renee and i have done is we created our own characters so there's none of this backstory stuff uh gave ourselves like our own intrinsic motivations and are going through in co-op 
uh, because you can play the entirety of Divinity Original Sin 2 with up to four people and sometimes more with mod, uh, which is really fucking neat. And it's a full drop-in, drop-out system. We're going through it completely together, but if somebody wanted to join us to control, like, one of the NPC characters in our quest, then they could. It's really neat. Yeah, they did really good with that game, and it makes me super excited for Boulder's Gate 3. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I think everyone was floored when they realized that license was being given to them, and everyone was equally excited when yeah. they saw it. Like, they did that teaser with the three, and everyone's thinking, oh, Divinity Original Sin 3 or Sin 3 is coming out. And then they drop Boulder's Gate, and everyone's jaws just hit the fucking floor. Yeah. I, uh, I cannot wait for that. And especially if the multiplayer works anything like it does here. Um, do you guys remember... Uh, it's going to be weird. It's going to take us way back. Do you remember playing multiplayer games on a LAN? Like a bunch of computers in the same network, and you can just join games from across the room. Do you remember that? Uh, yeah. 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 I remember <laughs> doing that in high school. Yeah, right? Uh, so it's great because we created a multiplayer lobby on on LAN and hold on you used LAN yeah we used LAN <laughs> it was great so wait, it was, it was amazing we, yeah I know we, we created the lobby and then she clicked the refresh and it hit join lobby and that's it there was <laughs> there was no weirdness at all and what's great is I'm using the version from GOG she's using the version from Steam and everything just fucking worked it was amazing Okay, um, I'm, it, I'm about to be an asshole just because I'm really curious. Did you cut your internet to make sure it's absolutely not using the network? No. But I don't know the last time I saw a game that actually supports LAN. Uh, right? And that, that's kind of my point, is that they do. There's a tab for it, and it just fucking works. Like, I didn't have to install, like, a Tungle or Heimachi or any other kind of bullshit, like, pseudo LAN software. It which just had a LAN games tab. And I created a LAN lobby, and then she joined a LAN lobby, and that's literally as complicated as it was. It was, it was goddamn perfect. <laughs> I, I just really fucking miss when games worked. I wonder how many people have actually used that feature, though. Not uh, many. A decent amount. Really? Yeah, because a whole lot of people actually play this, like, either with their spouses in... in you know, the same room or the same apartment or as a family. Hmm. It's really neat. It's actually one of the bigger selling points is that you can play this that way. That's actually one of the things that people hated about Pathfinder Kingmaker is that they had no multiplayer whatsoever. You can't Yeah, play. but you're talking the D&D thing there, but you're saying that was one of the biggest selling points. No one I know that picked up that game has ever no, done no, that. The multiplayer I... is one of the biggest selling points. Not Okay, the okay. Okay, that's what I was going to say. I'm like, <laughs> dude, I think you're overstating your no. use case here. <laughs> no, okay. multiplayer is one of the biggest selling points for Divinity Original Sin 2. Okay. So, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, it's just one of those nice things. It's just like, oh, I remember how games used to just fucking work. That was nice. <laughs> Holy shit. It Next does. thing you know, Tom's going to say Renee had to plug a keyboard into his computer. And you remember when you had to be on the same console? Uh <laughs> Remember when you had to hook up your RCA cables to your Commodore 64? Ugh. <laughs> Fun fact, the only time I've ever played games on a LAN was with you guys. I'm so CS sorry. CS Go. It serves so much better. Oh, God, that was at Tom's apartment. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and even then, it technically wasn't LAN. Oh. Yeah, I guess so. Because uh, we, we were all there together, yeah. but we were still playing online. Yeah. So I think Tom's brother was playing with us. Yeah. And he was at his own place because he didn't want to be social. I mean, <laughs> but he still wanted to kill us. I, I can relate to that. <laughs> you didn't want to be with the board of directors. Yep. Anyway, um, so do we have any other games? Uh I I do, actually. I've got well, I guess I guess they're not games. Do you guys have anything before I just hijack even more? Uh, I think we've just been playing our normal weekly stuff. We played some Rocket League. Um, Herc and I played some Tarkov runs today. Yeah. Uh, went fairly so, well. Kind of. Yeah. Nothing noteworthy. A couple of... I don't remember anything noteworthy. All right. No, not really. It was a series of 
unfortunate events on our last one, but. Oh, don't even get me going on that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, now I'm going to ask a series of what unfortunate events. <laughs> oh, it's so, just, so we got <laughs> caught out in different spots. Yeah. So we went and Eric has to do a specific thing, which is kill a scav with a specific gun. And I have to do a specific thing, which is kill the scav boss. So Eric kills the scav boss. I died to a grenade with the sound bug where I couldn't hear that there was a grenade. So I had no idea to like move and get out of the way. And then <laughs> Eric gets a bunch of cool loot and, you know, goes across the map and then he ends up dying to a player. Nice. And still didn't get that scav kill he needed. Aww. That raid. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty brutal. It started off so like, perfect was, too, because it was like as I soon as we I was mowing down Scab Boss yeah. and all the fuckers with him. It was like as soon as we started, we're like, oh cool, we got the spawn closest to this area where a lot of Scav spawn, and the Scav Boss can spawn. And we go there, and lo and behold, hey, the Scav Boss actually spawned this raid. And then things didn't go according to plan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's Tarkov. Case scenario. Like. My very first kill I got, I'm like, Adam, I'm sorry. I think I just killed your man. <laughs> I had one job. <laughs> Eric pulled the rug out from under my feet. <laughs> it's all right. But no, you that was, you that have to learn to roll with the punches on Tarkov. And yeah, it's all good. It was still fun. Yeah. It's still a good time. Anyway, so, Tom, I'm yeah. going to restart my interface. So don't throw it to me and start talking about your game. All right. Uh, so totally not a game um uh they're actually videos movies television streaming whatever it's it's a video i streamed it from the internet um so the the first one is a uh a netflix like documentary mini series called high score i always forget that because it sounds super generic um but uh it's really really cool um they actually go into like some gaming history like hey here's sega versus nintendo and what happened or here's how atari got started or you know the people that actually created miss pac-man by hacking apart arcade boards like here's their story and how they did it or did space invaders actually cause uh like a hundred yen coin shortage in japan uh, and it's it's not like super in depth. It stays pretty high level, but it's very entertaining. And the people they talk to are giant figures in the video game industry. Um, so if you're looking for like some video gamey content uh, to watch while you're not actively playing, like I was literally watching this every day while eating lunch during the workday, um, and it's good. If you want something more in depth, uh, gaming historian on YouTube definitely dives more into the details and the nitty gritty of this stuff. Um, but if you've got Netflix and you want video game stuff, check out High Score. It's pretty good. I'll have to look into that. Uh, yeah. From what so. I can tell. Uh, Eric is back with a fresh interface restart. Yes. yes. I was hoping to hear some feedback from you guys that you were hearing me. I appreciate that. Yes. Because sometimes yeah, yeah. Discord gets wonky when I do that. Ah. Uh, uh, nope. okay. seems, seems good so far. So, yeah. Um, so, all... so high score sounds interesting. I'm going to have to look at that because I've been looking for something to watch lately. Yeah, check out high score. Um, if you want more details, uh, Gaming Historian on YouTube is fucking fantastic. And it's on YouTube. His shit's free. Um, so yeah, I, I, can, I can recommend that. Um, the other thing I watched as I let a goal in, um, cost to do in podcast. Sorry, team. <laughs> There's a, uh, a documentary of a game that I'm not sure any of you have played, but the documentary is called Pretending I'm a Superman. Uh, and it is the story of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, the entire series. <laughs> it's Inception, like uh, the whole background, skateboarding culture, all this stuff. Just going into the game and kind of the impact it had on not only the game's industry, but even on skateboarding as a whole. Um, it's really good. It's uplifting. It's fantastic. And they don't brush over the bad parts of Tony Hawk. Like, Hey, it turns out that selling a plastic skateboard to people that have, that has like shitty controls. Wasn't, wasn't great. Uh, or, Hey, yeah, <laughs> we, we did the underground to, to American wasteland thing. Yeah. That, that kind of sucked, didn't it? Um, but they have interviews with all kinds of pro skateboarders, with Neversoft developers. Uh, Tony Hawk basically hosts the whole fucking thing. 
Uh, and it's it's great. Uh, if you're okay. if you're in love with that series, especially recently, because the remakes just came out, and you want a little bit more information on you know what made this thing so special, and why the fuck does seventy two pin connector care so much about a goddamn skateboarding game? Uh, pretending I'm a Superman is a fantastic documentary to do that. Okay, so I said I was looking for something to watch, and and you described High Score, and I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. Maybe I'll look into that. Okay, now I'm gonna look. This is the one. This is way. This is way more <laughs> <Yep>. interesting immediately. <laughs> so, uh, uh, well, where is this? Where do you watch it? So I watched it on. Um, how am I going to say this? Disclaimer: I'm speaking of my okay. own volition. <laughs> <laughs> I watched this on uh, Amazon Prime Video. I did buy it, but you can rent it. Um, and it okay. was literally click, rent the thing, and watch it. It was super So why easy. did you say, how can so I again, say Oh, that. okay, it's okay. Yeah, it. that's the, just happens to be where you watch it, I see. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. So uh, um, yeah, I, I would absolutely give that a shot because it's... It's really fucking uplifting. Um, I, I might like watch that they, tonight, actually. <laughs> after They talked about, like, the rise and death of skateboarding, which has happened, like, 97 times, mm -hmm. uh, and how Tony Hawk actually, you know, changed the face of skateboarding forever. Um, like, even Tony Hawk was like, yeah, people today are just like, oh, crooked grind into a heel flip and then manual out to another rail. Yeah, no, that shit doesn't happen. We didn't do that in skateboarding. That's just something we put in the game because we thought it would be fun. And then you see these skateboarding kids who grew up with this shit pulling these insane, impossible to do tricks off. And it's it's amazing. We literally changed the way how, you know, people skateboard today. Um, people are doing insane things that they saw in the game that Tony specifically said, you know, this is not how skateboarding works. You, you can't mm -hmm. do this stuff. It doesn't work that way. Holy shit, they did it. What the <laughs> fuck? And it's great. It's fantastic. It's really uplifting. Uh, I loved it. I really loved it. It's kind of fun that you found into that after we had the conversation last week of did the video game help drive the culture because we was comparing it to like if Dave Mira had the same treatment. Yeah. They, oh, yeah. uh, it's actually, really interesting. Yeah. You'll like this. They actually have a bunch of the bands that were featured in Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 uh, as far as that soundtrack goes. I, and some bands, they said, I don't know, man. We're like... We were unknown. We were opening up for like giant bands and nobody like they were actively booing us off the stage because they just wanted us to leave until we started playing Superman. <laughs> what the fuck? And everybody's going nuts. Uh, these bands are talking about, yeah, we got a giant chunk of our fan base simply from people hearing our songs in the game. Uh, and it goes into kind of how the Tony Hawk soundtrack became this big tour de force to take bands from relative obscurity and like just the annals of skateboard culture all the way to mainstream pop icon because of a goddamn PlayStation. <laughs> okay. Don't forget about 64. No, um, but okay. We always Come forget on. about 64. It was literally uh, honest, the first version of that game. Honest question. Why did Superman became, become like the iconic song of the soundtrack? Because it's peppy. <laughs> it's like, I, it's, I like Superman. Don't get me wrong. I think it's a good song. But like, why did that one stand out more than everything else? I it just it fits. It I really fucking I like that. It, like to me, I think that it's that Rage Against the Machine song is the one that always sticks out to me. Gorilla Radio. Yeah. To me, a uh, boy who destroyed the world AFI. I think that or, was introduced in two. Or what's the one that goes da 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 Fellas, I don't know how long we've done podcasting, but that is the worst thing we have done in that entire time. I'm You're just going to say it right now. That, oh, dear God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Um, I don't know what either of you two are doing. So, um, oh, okay. So, uh, yeah. Um, check out that documentary, Pretending I'm a Superman. Uh, it's fucking fantastic. Highly recommend it. Awesome. Uh, and by the way, be prepared to want to play Tony Hawk for like three days after you watch that thing. I have no doubt. Yeah. It's amazing how watching something like that gets someone just so amped up. Yeah. Right. Like I was like, like when we were watching uh, like uh, the international, like we we're watching high level Dota play. And after the match, we're like, we got to play. We got to play, man. Like, it's like you're coming down from that high. You just got to keep it. Well, it's like whenever anyone is uh, watching RLCS. 
right after. Yeah. What do they oh, do? They want to yep. play Rocket League. Yep. Yep. Let's play Speaking Rocket League. Of, Let's play Rocket League and then be um, disappointed at our level of play compared to what we just watched. So I think we're done with uh, games. So let's start with some news and some news that's not on the list. Uh, the boys. The Jacob, boys. Ty, not Tyler and Wonder. They they qualified. So um, our LCS regional event two, stage one. It's a Swiss round. Um, they're going to be playing on Sunday, which is tomorrow. Um, and they're starting off against Omelette, which is Lions team. So as much as I want to wish Omelette well, and I hope they do well, they're losing that first fucking game, fellas. <laughs> so yeah, either way, uh, we start tomorrow. It's at 9.30, but it's not streamed. Uh, we'll still be around the Discord cheering them on. Uh, we'll be sending out information on Twitter as soon as there's an update on what happened. So follow the Twitter. You'll see what's going on there. And some of the, I think the later rounds are streamed. So depending on... Yes. Depending on how I, everything goes. Yeah, and we'll uh, our Twitter will keep you up to date with who we're playing, what time the match starts, and whether or not it's going to be on stream. So keep an eye on our Twitter. You'll see that information coming out. As well as it'll be in the Discord. So either place is a good source for you to get that information. <laughs> um, okay, <laughs> so let's get to non-us news, and let's start with the shit news, and then we'll get to the fun news after that. The Twitter, yes, I'm a fucking old man. Get over it. Um, How do I post a tweet to my fellows? But um, let's get to the corporate dick wagging competition that we seem to touch every week. Dick now, wagging, wagging, uh, wagging. <laughs> you got a wascally wabbit. Um, so anyway, the Epic Apple lawsuits thicken as now Apple is counter suing Epic. Boy, oh boy, this isn't going away. No, it's... This is turning so... into the meme of the two Spider-Men pointing at each other. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is Spider-Man meme through uh, and through. So, uh, yeah, Apple Apple is suing Epic for, for damages due to the bullshit they pulled and trying to rile everyone into a frenzy. Like, I, I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. Okay, if you're if you are a gamer and this is of any interest to you and you you want to you want to make your opinion known, just just be aware that this is corporate dick waving. Like <laughs> neither of these corporations are your friend. They're literally out to sell you products and make you a, a consumer and you know, while they both, you know, do some stuff that's nice and and build some cool stuff, you you shouldn't take sides in this fucking proxy war. That's what they want you to do. Don't give in to the bullshit. Just uh, grab a bucket of popcorn and sit back and watch. It'll solve itself. Popcorn. And eventually good. something will happen. There could be an interesting legal president, as always said by me. But who the fuck knows? <laughs> um. Yeah, we'll keep you up to date when something actually happens. This is just more. Um. Oh, you're doing this. I'm doing that. Going yeah. on right now. So, um, yeah, let's uh, carry on. Let's get into Microsoft news. This is some stuff that I uh, hit on Quick Hits this week, by the way. Check it out sometime on our YouTube. Uh, anyway, Xbox Series S and X information was dropped on them this week. First is a leak, a leak that was so fucking accurate that Microsoft had to come out and actually make official announcements, <laughs> which is awesome. <laughs> Gotta love it. So the uh, Series S is going to be uh introduced at a 300 dollars price point in the series x at a 500 so i don't than i thought i would yeah that's i bad. don't like this but i get it so they're doing a cheap console because hey man these consoles are starting to get pricey and here's an alternative for you it's not going to be as strong so i don't know what their game plan is if they're gonna allow developers to have games that run in two different settings or how they're going to do it. But yeah, so there's a cheap console and expensive console. Cool thing with these is a payment system. So you can get the cheap $300 Series S for $25 a month for 24 months. And that will come with Game Pass Ultimate, which we'll talk to you about in a minute, and Xbox Live. So if you do this, you're actually going to be saving money if you planned on doing Game Pass and Xbox Live anyway, which is really fucking cool. They're essentially financing an Xbox for you for free, no interest. Make your payments, get the box. 
That's cool. Which it is makes really it rad. so much more accessible to people. Yes. And that's, I don't like the 300 console, but it's accessibility. Mm -hmm. And then also the 500, yeah, it's a little expensive, $35 a month. You get it, Xbox Live, and Game Pass. Do that for two years, you got it, and you're saving a total of like 40 bucks overall. That's interesting. So, yeah. It, it's a really interesting play. They toyed around with it on the Xbox Series or Xbox One S. They did some payment plans. So this isn't their first foray into it, but it's the first time they've opened up a generation with it, which so is really I, interesting. I really wish that Gates would have won his argument when building the Xbox, the original Xbox division of Microsoft. His argument was, hey, we'll make it back in licensing. Just give everyone a console for free. Literally anyone who wants it, you get an Xbox, you get an Xbox, you get an Xbox. And if we have 99% market saturation because everybody can get a free Xbox, of course third-party developers are going to pay to license their games for our platform, right? It's who the fuck wouldn't? Um, I still think that that might be a viable business model for a company that has like more money than God. But um, yeah, it, Microsoft it'll be a was that company and still is. Yeah, I, I think this is actually going to work out pretty well. I'm interested to see what Sony has to say in response to this. Um, they're having an announcement here soon. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. There's no way they can undercut the Series S. No way. Like that $300 price point. Dude, that's gonna be so fucking hard yeah, to I beat. know. I, I don't yeah. know how, how they respond to that. And I don't that know how they what Game yeah. Pass PS Now is fine, but honestly, like on I was going through my list of like subscription services and PS Now is on my short list for the chopping block. It's not uh, new stuff. Has, it it's good stuff, but it's not new stuff. Yeah. Yeah, like it's it's fine, but it's just not great. And with Microsoft, like I can, yeah, sure, with PS Now, I can just stream anything, which is kind of cool. But with Microsoft, I'd much rather download the game, like Halo mm -hmm. Master Chief Collection, right? Do I want to stream that? Nah, it sounds kind of shitty to stream. But would I just download it and play it whenever? Hell fucking yeah, I would. Uh, I think it, the tech works a lot better. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And there and are some really, well. really heavy hitters on, on Game Pass. Like there are, That's a lot of value. Yes, there, there are a lot are. of really good games on there. Yeah. And they just made it better. So, well, in, in a way. Um, so that Game Pass for PC is now leaving beta. And with that, they're starting to charge $10 a month instead of five, which on its own, I still think is a decent deal if you even, play it. Yeah, even as is, that's not bad. I mean, it's obviously, you know, it's a price hike, so you don't like to Ooh. see it. But if you actually analyze it, it's not, I don't think that's a bad deal overall. Uh, yeah. But... With this five extra bucks a month, they're now also bundling in EA Play. So Titanfall, Sims, Sim City. I think sports titles are in this as well. I mean, it's, it's Mass Effect because if Mass Effect is in there, that's yes, like I know Mass Effect is. Then that's like 120 hours across three games because Andromeda doesn't exist. Just <laughs> right there, that's that's alone worth the price of five bucks a month to get through all those. What else is so on EA Access? Isn't it like the Battlefield stuff too? Battlefield, yeah. uh, Titanfall. Um, honestly, Anthem. It's Mary free. Beth. Play it. Flying I around as Iron Man is fun for a few hours at minimum. Yeah. I would play Anthem for free. There's no way I'm going to fucking buy it. But if it's included with Game Pass, yeah, I'll be there. Game Pass has made me play a bunch of weird games that I had no interest in. Because I'm just like, oh, that cover art looks kind of cool. I wonder what this is about. Uh, which is exactly why you have a platform like that, right? Like, how many times do you fire up Netflix and you just scroll to, like, the ends of the earth and you're like, well, I don't know, let's try this thing. It ends up being, like, a hidden gem or something yeah. that really interests you that you wouldn't have ever seen before. That's how I stumbled upon Snowpiercer, like, four years ago or something. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, Chris and I are like, oh, that looks interesting. Watch it like, holy shit, this was actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, that's... um. It's interesting moves by them. I think that they are nailing it on the hardware. They are nailing it on subscription services. If they get Halo back up to speed, Forza is good. They get one or two more titles. They could finally be there with Sony again. They just got to get some titles in there. I, like not I, the Game Pass. I mean, first party titles. Yeah. I want Halo Infinite to look better than 
what was in the previews. But I, well. at the same time, I don't want them to get rid of Craig. Craig is not <laughs> part of that. Universe. You can't, you can't just wholesale get rid of Craig. I get you. Craig, yeah. Craig, Craig was beautiful in his own way. Yeah, I mean, he's ugly as sin. He's got a face only a mother can love. <laughs> but that mother thinks he's beautiful. Anyway, um, yeah, Microsoft, good changes. Um, any parting shots on it? You guys want to get in there? Um, uh, the only parting shot I got is with the needler. No. Nah. <laughs> what the fuck is Craig? Do you remember the the Halo Infinite preview and that kind of monkey looking brute guy? Monkey it, man. It's, it's a brute that they um out of the it, gameplay where they froze, enlarged, and showed how pixel eighty things were or yeah, polygony things were. I guess pixel eighty is not really the right word in that one. Anyway. Um, last bit of news. There was another game announcement. It was in a series that everyone was excited about, but it wasn't quite the one everyone was anticipating. Nintendo has announced Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. I'm actually kind of excited about it. I'm not. So I um, Hyrule Warriors. I played Hyrule Warriors. And you know what? It was the same exact game as every other Dynasty Warriors I've played before, which is I had a great time for about an hour until I realized that's the only little piece of gameplay stretched <laughs> over 60. And so I'm going to I'm going to really need some convincing here in Nintendo because I'm not buying that shit straight up. I paid 60 bucks for Hyrule Warriors. I wasted 60 bucks. I've probably put 10 hours into that game. I'm not going back to it. It's uninstalled. So some notes for people hyrule warriors is a sub series inside the zelda universe that is essentially dynasty warriors in zelda yeah and for um, people who don't know what dynasty warriors was um just like a a super kind of large scale battle beat em up sort of game yeah you are one verse, one verse a thousand yeah it would literally combat. count that you'd have a counter on the bottom right of your screen and it would get up into a thousand by the end of a match. Yeah. So yeah it's like it's you kind of versus a thousand other like tiny little grunt guys. And I, it's, it's fun. Like, I'm, I'm never gonna yeah. Say, yeah. And then the boss, I'm never going to say that dynasty warriors is a bad series. I love it. it, but it's, it's exactly what it says on the tin. If you want to go slash your sword through 20,000 people over 60 hours, yeah, that's that's Dynasty Warriors. I don't know if it really fits in Zelda though, and it the combat to me didn't feel good or unique enough for me to pay sixty bucks for that skin. So it, let's be real, it was a skin. So what Tom's referencing is there already was a like I said the title, uh, Hero Warriors. This, however, there's some details to depart these two. That one was done in silo by the team that developed the game. They had nothing to do with the Zelda team at all. So this game was just made on its own, trying to use Zelda tropes without any input from the Zelda team. This one is being made by a separate team, but in conjunction with the core Zelda team. So you might see some better kind of integration with what we saw with Breath of the Wild. So I don't know. I'm kind of excited about it because it's also basing off of Breath of the Wild. 100 years before Breath of the Wild, it's about the war with uh, Calamity Ganon. So Breath of the Wild was my favorite Zelda because it was the least Zelda of the Zeldas. So I'm kind <laughs> Irk doesn't like I'm Zelda, kind of so the less like Zelda, Zelda the game is, the more he enjoys it. No, it was it, it was <laughs> the least right, Zelda like, but it, Zelda Fallujah, and it's literally just COD Modern Warfare 2. That's the whole game. It, it's god damn it. Anyway, um, this is gonna be based off Breath of the Wild, which I find to be really interesting. <laughs> so I think it's kind of um Kind of interesting and kind of fun. And fuck you for my pronunciation, Scott. <laughs> Though Scott does call out. Get back to, uh, what's it called? Um, Dynasty Warriors. Did you guys ever do the fucking uh, Gundam wing? Or nah. the Gundam Dynasty? That was a lot of fucking fun, dude. Holy shit, that one played well. Gundam was made for that type of combat. I never did play that one. Destroying all the small fucks and then here comes the big enemy. Yeah, it was really good. But all that said, I mean, I'm tapped, fellas. 
You guys yeah, got anything? I got nothing. Uh, check out High Score on Netflix and pretend that I'm a Superman wherever you can buy it or rent it. Yeah. Remember Craig. Shit. Remember Keep Craig. Always, always. Craig always be in our hearts. Before we do the social media rundown, I want to give a quick shout out to King Chris 2000 for following. Thanks for the follow. Oh, shit. During the cast, we don't do the alert uh, thing because we record these podcasts and put it for audio only listeners. So we don't have like stream alerts and stuff up. But I would like to start oh. calling that stuff out at the end of the streams for sure. Also, throw out to uh, one whack for the sub. Thank you on that. Oh, I didn't. I don't see that one on the thing. Thanks. <laughs> I got you, dog. Don't worry. <laughs> it doesn't show up on my uh, <laughs> my alert. Scroll, scroll my down. Feed. Scroll down a little. Oh. Uh, I can't. I can't. I have to alt tab. Don't, yeah, you're, you're, you're playing. I get. You. I got you, dog. Appreciate no it. Word. Thank you. We didn't want to miss anybody. Yeah. You yeah. are appreciated, one way. Absolutely appreciated. Thank you. We love you. And with that, <laughs> <laughs> we love you. I think it's time for the rundown, eh? So, it's time. If, you're, if you're watching us on Twitter right now, thank you. Appreciate it. We love the live audience. Makes shit interesting. But Twitter, Twitch. 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 If you're watching on Twitter right now, what the fuck? You're a wizard. If you're watching on Twitch. Thank you. Uh, but let it be known. Uh, we do put up our podcasts on YouTube if you miss it, as well as we clip out some clips out of our YouTube or our podcast that they're on YouTube. So some smaller bite-sized stuff instead of the two one-hour podcast. Also, there's stuff like quit kits going up there, plays of the day montage. So we got some content over there for you to enjoy. If you're watching that over there right now, Thank you. But we do stream live every Saturday night on our Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time. So just jump in there. We interact with the chat all the time. We play Rocket League, as you see, and you can snipe our lobbies, jump in and actually play with us. So try that sometime. It's really good. Also, we have a Twitter, 72 PC underscore official. We uh, tweet out every day a top clip from the community. And then we also do some other random news here and there, as well as tournament updates and stuff going on with the team. So if you want to be in the loop on what's going on there, you should follow us at Twitter. Also, any information you want is always in the Discord. Everyone is there to be able to answer questions. So if you want the Discord, if you're on Twitch, scroll down. If you're on YouTube, look in the header. There's links everywhere. Get in the Discord. A lot of really cool people. A lot of really interesting games everyone keeps always bringing up. And finally... That was a whole lot of fucking sites and URLs and IDs and stuff to remember. Just go to 72pinconnector.com. Everything's linked there. Find out where you want to go. Man, that's all I got for you guys this week. Yeah, so that's it. Thanks yeah, for listening. Yeah. And until next week, game on. Game on. Bye.